So this is the answer to the questions on page 10 and 10, 11 and 12. OK, so I'm just going to type them as I go. Right. So giant covalence. So the thing just so you know, the thing I look at here is not the name of the substance, but just that it's a giant covalent structure. So I know it is going to be a high melting and boiling point uh, will not conduct electricity probably, right? Well, insoluble, let's play it safe. Insoluble in water. Okay, uh, definitely, and then possibly, they haven't given us enough information really to say what else it's going to have. You're just looking for the things that are common to all giant covalent substances. Um, we do know the structure, so if it's like diamond, it's going to um, not conduct electricity. Okay, not, I should say. Okay, so there are the answers to that. I'll put this up after. Right, silicon dioxide is used to make moles. Explain why silicon dioxide is used for this. So what, um, for liquid metal, so because of its high melting point. Right, so they're talking about liquid metals, they're gonna have a high, it's, it's just something that will melt when you pour something really hot into it. Silicon carbide, that's made of silicon and carbon. Giant covalent, again. Uh, so why has anything got a, anything with giant covalent structure got a high melting and boiling point? It is because um, the strong covalent bonds require a lot of energy to break. Right, aluminium iodide has a giant structure. Oh, right, aluminium iodine, right, so that's a metal non-metal. So that's going to be ionic, right? Okay, because metal non-metal combination, uh, how do you know is made of a metal and non-metal? Or you could say it's metal compound. Okay. Right, so everything metal, non-metal will be uh, <clears throat> ionic. State the conditions under which an ionic compound can conduct electricity. So this is just stating that when it is molten aqueous. How many electrons does silicon have in its outer shell? So you have to look at the periodic table for this. Silicon is element number 14. It's in group four, so four. How many neutrons does silicon have? It has got 14 protons and a mass number of 28. So taking that away from each them away from each other, you're going to get 14. What's the relative mass and charge on the electrons? Let's go back a bit. It is relative mass is 1 over 1840, and relative charge is minus 1. How did scientists prove that plum pudding in the model must be incorrect? Oh, actually, ignore that because actually that's not on our spec, but it is. it was the um, um, alpha particles passed through it. Right. Worry about that. Actually, score that out. Not in that respect. So I apologise for leaving that in. Um, a student has a sample of two substances, right? And student not okay. They cannot. They cannot. They are both high. Let's say. So a Bunsen burner isn't going to is unlikely to melt either of them. Okay. Um, not the students, by the way. The melting points are both. How could the student work out? Um, how could the student work out which one is which? Electrical conduct, the metal will conduct electricity. I know you could say it looks shiny. Uh, Makes a ringing sound when hit. Okay, conducts heat. There are a number of ones you could have there. What other differences are there between giant ionic and covalent structures? Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, giant ionic. Oh, I've been silly. 
This is not a mouse. Um, the ionic and the conduct electricity when an aqueous the ionic compound is brittle, right? If it's you can crush it. Okay, uh, between any other differences uh, and covalence. Dissolve in water. Okay, graphite is a giant coin structure. Right. Okay, so in what way are diamond and graphite similar? So they both have high melting point, boiling point. Both, what else they said? High melting point and boiling point. Both insoluble in water. The two differences: uh, graphite is soft and conducts electricity. Diamond is hard and does not. There's two differences there. Explain why graphite can conduct electricity. The delocalized electrons, localized electrons between the layers of carbon hexagonal. Always get as much detail as um, can move and carry charge. What's the difference between elements and compounds? Elements, only one type of atom. Compounds, two or more different types of atom or elements. Okay. Student has a sample of two substances, one of right, other than appearing. Uh, either the student identify which is which. Graphite conducts electricity when solid. And sodium chloride does not. In terms of charged particles, what is the difference between in like between graphite? Oh, graphite has free electrons or delocalized electrons, ionic uh, substances use ends to carry charge. Okay, so there's a big difference. Make sure you know the difference. How can you tell from the element from the element sodium chloride is made it's metal non-metal? Right, it's the elements that make it up. Drawn thought and cross diagram. I'm afraid you're going to have to look that one up yourself. Or maybe do it at the end. Explain why sodium chloride is a high melting boiling point. It's strong, electrostatic. And strong electrostatic attractions between between optically charged ions require a lot of energy to break. And graphene. <laughs> Excuse me. The bonds between the atoms and graphene are covalent. Oh, choose the correct answer. I don't know where you're supposed to choose that. I'm afraid you're on your own here. 
need to take strong covalence. Okay, graphene is made of carbon atoms. And in graphene, each atom bonds to three other atoms. Uh, explain why the layers of carbon can slide past each other and onto the page. Graphite is non metal. The delocalized electrons between the hexagonal layers of carbon and move and carry charge. Okay, that's that. Okay, folks, just check that you got on okay with those and make any, just check back on your notes and any you didn't know and check for the dot and cross diagram of sodium chloride. <clears throat> I'll actually add it in at the end here.